Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and yes, this is my follow-up, my post-mortem on the Falcon Heavy launch. I obviously watched it live-streamed across the internet on like three different feeds. It was very, very exciting. And, you know, yes, people will perhaps state that it is amazing, and maybe some will overstate, some will understate, but... You know, it was pretty cool to watch and I thoroughly enjoyed the thing and I really did love seeing all those video feeds of the car in in low Earth orbit, basically, with, uh, of course, Starman riding along. So, uh, yeah, important thing to note, launch got delayed several times because of upper atmosphere winds. Eventually it went at uh, 12.45 Pacific time, so, of course, that would be you know, 3.45 East Coast time, which was like 15 minutes before the end of their launch window. They uh, recovered two of the boosters, which landed at back at the Space Center. Within seconds of each other, I got that wrong. I was misinformed. Uh, I thought they were going to be at least 15 seconds apart. Amusingly, during the live feed, they used two copies of the same booster cam feed, and everyone was very confused. SpaceX did go back and fix this when they reposted the video in their uh, on their YouTube page. So check that out. The core booster, after uh, well, basically after getting accelerated up, the core booster continued for another thirty five seconds before main engine cutoff, and uh, it attempted to land. And apparently, on the way back down. They were supposed to light three engines, but only one of the engines lit, supposedly because they ran out of tetraethyl aluminium, TEA, and uh, tetraethyl beauty, uh, boron, boron, that's it. So, yeah, that meant that it was only running on one engine, so instead of, you know, translating sideways after slowing down to land on the barge, it instead hammered into the ocean at 300 kilometers per hour. It was about 100 metres away from it, but supposedly the impact force was still large enough to damage the barge and break a couple of the engines. They're not sure if the cameras are damaged yet, so I haven't heard anything about whether we're going to see any footage from that, but it would be spectacular, and of course we know that Elon's in a good mood after this succeeded. So yeah, second stage, of course, continued... uh, Fairing deploy happened and we got to see our first look at Starman in the car. That was a pretty cool moment. It uh, inserted into orbit and then about 20 something minutes later, the engine reignited and it raised the Apogee up to 7,000 kilometers. So in that orbit, the period would have been about three hours. And the idea was that they wanted the they wanted the payload to spend a lot of time in the Van Allen belt. So it spent more time in the Van Allen belts than would be typical for a geostationary transfer orbit. Um, So yeah, we of course then got this wonderful live feed for basically five hours, just watching this thing spin stabilized, slowly orbiting the Earth, getting amazing views. And it was kind of surreal because it actually looked, it looked fake, right? Like, If this had been in a movie, they would have said, oh, this looks fake. Go and get those special effects people to make better graphics, right? More realistic graphics. Well, realism sometimes looks unrealistic when vacuum is involved. It was kind of beautiful to even see the Earth reflected in the side of the uh, car. Uh, They polished that up perfectly. We had a couple of different camera angles on that. And yeah, it was was great to see that. Now... um, there were some other features that turned out the dashboard display don't panic. And I pointed out that this was probably a response to somebody on Twitter that replied to Elon's original comment about the car being the payload and said, hey, why don't you send along a copy of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? And of course, looks like Elon has listened to this and bang, that's what we've got. Uh, we were also told that the spacesuit was actually a test item. This was part of its, uh, you know, a qualification test for the spacesuit. So there's a dummy sitting in there. Um, I don't know if they had sensors verifying that it worked, but hey, you know, I guess if they're testing it, it was just another of many things that they tested. Um, they also apparently had a little, uh, little, you know, Hot Wheels toy car sitting on the dashboard as well with a little tiny, tiny spaceman. So it's a, they totally exhibited this into space. So yeah, 
Around 6.30, it then performed the Trans-Mars injection burn, and it did so over California, and apparently there's some great video of that. If I had been looking in the right direction, I could have probably seen this, but unfortunately they didn't explain exactly when this burn was going to happen, and so missed my opportunity to see this great moment. So the Trans-Mars injection burn was a burn to depletion. That's basically where they run, do it until it runs out of fuel. It doesn't technically run out of fuel. They do it until it runs so low on fuel that the engine can't operate without exploding. And that took it further than Mars orbit. The orbit plot that was published by Elon Musk showed an aphelion of 2.61 AU and a perihelion of 0.98. And if you calculate the period of that, that is about 2.404 years. So that means in 2030, it, in February 2030, it should come close to the Earth one more time. So if you're going to go out and pick it up, that's a good opportunity to aim for. Unfortunately, we won't get any more video from it because the batteries will get depleted inside 12 hours after launch. There's no solar panels on it. It is going to be dead. And of course, the other question is how the Tesla will handle itself in deep space. I mean, it's obviously designed for terrestrial operation. And, you know, car paint tends to be pretty robust, but it is going to be subject to full, you know, unfiltered ultraviolet radiation. There's many things that will degrade, many polymers and plastics that will break down. But I'm going to point out that a lot of the degradation process that we see on Earth due to sun exposure are accelerated by having oxygen there. So when a molecule gets broken, there's oxygen molecules waiting around just to you know, take up that broken molecule and make sure it never works again. So I don't know how that works in a vacuum, like whether the stuff just ends up in some sort of excited state, whether the degradation is slow. And I'd love to know because this is a question I've asked on previous occasions. Um, also, Elon confirmed that they were had no plans to refly any of the boosters anyway. And that does lead us to an interesting point that the Falcon Heavy in re, fully reusable mode can put eight tons into a geostationary transfer orbit. But a regular Falcon 9 in expendable mode can put exactly the same amount into a geostationary transfer orbit. So the Falcon Heavy may not work so well as a fully recoverable vehicle. Like, it might actually be better to run it where the center core gets uh, expanded so that they can really put a big chunk of mass up there. I don't know where, where this will go, because obviously if they've lost one core, then that means that they can't reuse it. Uh, there are missions lined up that will use the Falcon Heavy, and obviously the have been taking every opportunity to try and put things on the Falcon Heavy to um, make it, to justify its existence, you know, because there will be a few things that they want to do that they can do with it. Elon also revealed, incidentally, that they had apparently tried to cancel Falcon Heavy development more than once, but uh, customers and whatever else decided that they, they wanted this. Uh, <laughs> apparently they spent something like half a billion dollars developing this so I hope it flies a few more times because I'd really like to see that double landing sometime oh also the the launch guide showed that they were going to attempt a fairing recovery and apparently Mr. Steven was on hand ready to catch but I haven't heard anything about that so I'm presuming that is a failure but anyway yeah this was an awesome, awesome event. Really glad that it happened as well as it did. Hope we get to see more. And uh, yeah, back to regular programming soon. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.